it's finally time to start talking about basketball. Mountaineer basketball. Let's go. What is going on, everybody? It's me again. Go to Blue Dude, and if you haven't already, go ahead and hit the like and subscribe button. Now, usually I do college football videos every day, but this particular video, I'm doing a preview of West Virginia's basketball season. There's a lot of hype going into it. So whether you agree with me, want to talk trash with me, or trash talk to me, you're going to enjoy this channel. So if you're not a West Virginia subscriber, you're still more than welcome to stick around. I'm just letting you know. There is a ton of buzz in Morgantown this year about West Virginia basketball, and that's because Oscar Sheway and Derek Culver will be back in Morgantown this year, and West Virginia is going to be a very dangerous team. We all know it starts with our legendary head coach, Bob Huggins, and he is speaking highly of this year's West Virginia basketball team. Let's look at the preseason top 25 rankings for college basketball real quick. Some of these names in the top 25 might surprise you. Number one, Gonzaga. Two, Baylor. Number three, Villanova. Number four, Virginia. Five, Iowa. Six, Kansas. Seven, Wisconsin. Eight, Illinois. Nine, Duke. 10, Kentucky. 11, Creighton. 12, Tennessee. 13, Michigan State. 14, Texas Tech. 15, West Virginia, 16 North Carolina, 17 Houston, 18 Arizona State, 19 Texas, 20 Oregon, 21 Florida State, 22 UCLA, 23 Ohio State, 24 Rutgers, and 25 Michigan. So West Virginia is ranked ahead of North Carolina, Texas, Ohio State, and Michigan. That's a pretty good start. Let's look at our schedule real quick. Opener against Northern Iowa, I think, has been canceled. So let's move past that. So after that, Youngstown State, Georgetown, Robert Morris, Richmond. And then we start our Big 12 slate. Home against Iowa State at number 6 Kansas. So a tough start. Home against Buffalo at Oklahoma at Oklahoma State. Home against number 19 Texas at number 2 Baylor. Home against TCU. Home against Oklahoma State at Kansas State. Home against number 14 Texas Tech. Home against Florida. That's a good out of conference. At Iowa State. Home against number six, Kansas State. At number 14, Texas Tech. Home against Oklahoma. Home against number two, Baylor. At number 19, Texas. At TCU. And home against Kansas State. So as far as the Big 12 schedule goes, it's kind of a tough start for West Virginia. We need to get off to a good start. Let's not forget, West Virginia did lose some production from last year's team. We lost guard Jermaine Haley, Chase Harler, and Brandon Knapper. Now, that's not a break-the-bank sort of loss, but it does hurt a little bit. Time to talk about who we do have for this year. First, the incoming freshman. Forwards night and day. 6'10", 235 pounds, he's a freshman. Forward Taj Thwait, 6'7", 210 pounds, he's also a freshman. And then we get a JUCO transfer, Kedrian Johnson, 6'3", 180 pounds. He's a good guard to add to our guard rotation. Of course, we get Spencer Mack. He, did, he doesn't have a lot of production, but he was a feel-good story for last year. Forward Gabe Osabwehin. Last year, he averaged 3.1 points per game. He was 54% from free throw and 36% from three-point. He's a senior. He adds some depth. Freshman Jalen Bridges, a four-star recruit out of Fairmont, West Virginia. He's 6'7", 220 pounds. He's quick. He's fast. He has range, but he does need to bulk up and add some strength. Another freshman to go along with him is Isaiah Cottrell, 6'10", 240 pounds, also a forward. Four-star out of Huntington, West Virginia. He has good hands and good feet. He's a good defensive player with long arms, has a good jump shot, and has NBA potential. 6'7", 215 pounds, Emmett Matthews Jr. He got off to a hot start last year, but kind of cooled off. Overall, he averaged 6.3 points per game, 62% from free throw. 39% from the field, and 30% from three-point. Our guard rotation is looking really good this year. First up, Miles McBride, 6'2", 200 pounds. He's a sophomore. Last year, he averaged 9.5 points per game, 74% from free throw, 40% from the field, and 30% from three-point range. Junior Jordan McCabe alongside him, 6'188 pounds. 
3.1 points per game, 76% from free throw, 31% from the field, and 20% from three-point range. Sean McNeil, a junior, 6'3", 210 pounds, 5.5 points per game, 81% free throw shooting, 36.9% from the field, and 33% from three-point. Of course, the guy that came on strong towards the end of the year, guard Taz Sherman, 6'4", 190 pounds. He averaged 5.3 points per game, 86% free throw shooting, and 38% from the field, 33% from three point. The two big guys that anchor this team. They are the ones that give West Virginia a chance to win the Big 12, get to the Final Four, and win a national championship for West Virginia. The first one, Junior Derek Culver, six foot 10, 255 pounds, 10.4 points per game, 8.6 rebounds per game, 45% from the field, and 51% free throw shooting. The superstar, Oscar Shibway, six nine, 260 pounds. He's a sophomore. He averaged 11.2 points per game, 9.3 rebounds per game. So both of those almost averaged a double-double. 70% free throw shooting and 55% from the field. So West Virginia has turned into this pound the ball down low sort of team and have some support from the outside. It used to be the other way around, but we have some great forwards that give us a chance. Great rebounding. West Virginia thrives on those second chance points and Oscar Sheebway, Derek Culver give that athleticism needed to get rebounds for second chance points. If West Virginia can fix their free throw issues, we will be a complete team and a very dangerous team. I think West Virginia will definitely finish in the top three. It all depends on what Kansas and Baylor do. I definitely think West Virginia is a better basketball team than Texas Tech and the rest of the Big 12. But I'm telling you, Baylor and Kansas, they're going to be a tough team. But West Virginia has one of their all-time, and you heard me correctly, all-time great teams this year. It's going to be about chemistry, and it's going to be about bringing intensity to every single game. Last year, we saw great potential at the beginning of the season. Things kind of fell apart towards the middle, but then... We came on strong at the end of the year. So if we can keep the chemistry going and everybody be on the same page, West Virginia could be a very, very dangerous team. And even though the season is shortened, I still think West Virginia will get to 20 wins. I believe it's a 25-game schedule. Usually it's 30 or more. So 20 wins out of a 25-game schedule is still pretty stinking good. And I think that's exactly what West Virginia does this year. This could be the year West Virginia wins a national championship in a major sport. And I know COVID is creating a lot of issues of doubt whether the entire season can be completed, but I have faith that we can get it done. The, the football season looks like it's going by well. Games are being canceled, players being quarantined, but as long as you just keep rolling with it, navigate through the difficulties, you can get through the season. We really need it to happen because West Virginia has one of their best teams of all time this year. That's all I got for you for this show. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you on my next show.